My next guest employs a diverse staff of professionals, many of whom are multilingual, which is an asset when dealing with international clients, which lets you know she's worldwide. You know, she's not some domestic. <laughs> she is also a licensed realtor, a licensed realtor in three states, Georgia, Florida, and Texas. Because you live in Houston as well, correct? Correct. I'm actually a real estate broker. A real so. estate broker. Okay. Yes. That's what I want to show. Just okay. Educate Rishon because I, <laughs> okay. I, I want to know. I bought enough homes. I want to know. What's a real estate broker? Real, okay, we get all that, you know. Because I, I, I learn from my guests as well. So okay. know that, you know, I, I know a lot. And I will tell yeah. people I'm a know-it-all. Yeah. But yeah. then I also ask questions about what I don't know. So the only difference is, is that a real estate broker it can own a brokerage and mm-hmm. hire agents. Every agent has to have a broker. Okay. Okay, cool. Okay. <laughs> she, she's just, I ain't even said her name yet. You know, she's okay. going to, you know, you know that's, why, that's why I don't have studio guests. Right now, right? That's the last studio guest of the year. Right here, right here. <laughs> you save the best for last. That's great. <laughs> she also follows me on social media because she knows I'm a baker. She loves to bake as well. Please welcome to Money Making Conversations, uh, Sylvia Weddington. Thank you. How you doing? Well, Happy Good. To be here. You look fashionably. Got your black on. Got your hair flowing. That's, that's right. the look. You, you, you know. I always tell people. People say you look nice. They say I know what a mirror is. I, I try to use it. <laughs> it. It serves a purpose in my house, and so that's what I tell people when they compliment me. And I take that compliment in a very, uh, you know, a humble manner because yeah. uh, you know people don't have to say nice things about you. That's yeah. right. Thank you. And so I when I look at your company, you was talking about a broker and a realtor. You know, because you have all these shows on TV. You know, uh, yes. you know, fix this, flip this. Are, are you are you one of those people? I'm not one of those people. <laughs> <laughs> You're not yeah, flipping anything. I'm not flipping anything. You're not going in buying a house for a hundred thousand and then tearing down some walls. And no, then... but I help people do that. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. And we help people do that. So mm. we definitely, uh, particularly in the area in the um, around the Mercedes Benz Stadium, mm-hmm, that's mm-hmm. a hot area too mm-hmm. for people to go in and fix something and flip it and try to flip it. And so. So that means that if you watch enough television, it means you buy the home at this rate, and do, do, you, do you, they do fix it up, right? They and do they, fix it up. And the purpose of fixing it up under a certain fee so they can sell it for some type of profit. Exactly. And that so, you don't do it, but you know clients. I know clients. I have clients that do that. So I'll take them out to preview the property, mm-hmm. and they'll decide whether or not they want to purchase that property, and, we, mm-hmm. and they know what the budget is of what they want, are wanting to add into that property. Mm-hmm. And then they purchase the property and go in and fix it and they either most of the time they they lease it out right or sometimes they sell it now here's the, here's the thing you said florida you said georgia and texas correct why three locations for your company well um we are a global company and the, the three locations because i lived in texas <laughs> that's where i started <laughs> yes ma'am. and we moved around a bit mm-hmm. so um i started i moved to atlanta uh-huh. And, you know, so I needed to, to have a license uh-huh. here as well. Uh-huh. So I kept Texas. And then, and then it's also a place where a lot of people who are athletes get traded to. Okay. So it's easier for me to be licensed in those states. Plus, I know the lay of the land. Right. Um, right. And I, I know Texas is a, is a no-tax state. Georgia is a tax state. Florida is a no-tax state, correct? Correct. Okay. However, in Texas, the property tax is extremely um, yeah. mm-hmm. Inflated, oh. <laughs> so uh, you may not have other taxes, but that property they tax you, will huh? get you, and that does not go away. And that's the thing we let people know that the mm-hmm. property tax, you know, everything else, even the mortgage will go away, but the the property tax does not. Okay, so 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 talk about walk us through your business because you have different layers. So I'm not going to do a disservice and act like you do just one thing because you have a concierge part of your business as well. Correct. So we'll talk about realty, real you know, being a realtor, a broker. You're a broker, right? I'm a broker. Okay, cool. So talk about how do you do your conduct your business in three different states? Well, um, I have a lot of frequent flyer miles. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I live. Can't be me. Can't be me. <laughs> I probably can't be too. Uh, but, so, but one of one of the ways that we do our business is that we um, we are have a concierge service that if you were buying a house mm-hmm. uh, anywhere in the mm-hmm. world, right. we would go and preview that house for you. Mm-hmm. And and narrow it down to three to five properties, mm-hmm. and when you are ready to maybe go to where it is, it could be in Russia, it could be here in the United States. Uh, we would meet you really? there, Russia. Yeah, in I Russia. Can, I can come to you. For that. <laughs> yeah, I have clients in Russia. <laughs> they mainly buy a lot in in Miami. So, but yeah, you could come to Russia. We could go to China. We could go anywhere in the world, and um, we are 
You may we have, have a, been we on have a global miles. connection. A couple of Russian trips, a China trip, you can knock me out the box right there. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't have a lot of those trips. Okay. Yeah, because I have two teenagers. So okay. that, that, that cuts okay. down a lot of yeah, we're travel. Talk about, cause I, cause we talk, that's how we met. I'm just yeah. a little backstory is that uh, we went to orientation together at the National Minority Suppliers Development Council, or MBE. Okay. And uh, I know why I went. I, I, I'm trying to, uh, first of all, I wanted my company, which is 3815 Media. You can go to 3815media.com and you can see I do. I have talent management. I have, uh, I do live events. Mm-hmm. I do marketing and branding. So I'm trying to find out and create relationships within the industry nationally and especially in Georgia, of telling people what I do. And right. and so what 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 was your purpose of joining the, the council? My purpose was to be able to meet people like mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. Uh, and people who are serious about their business because, as you know, it takes it, they don't just let you walk in the door. No. <laughs> no. It's a long, drawn out process mm-hmm. and, you know, and a strong vetting process. So, mm-hmm. when you know, when you walk into uh, a room with the people who actually took the time mm-hmm. to invest in getting that uh, mm-hmm. certification that they're serious about their business. And you know, just to be able to work and network with, right. with other business owners like myself. Well, you know, that, that's really what this is all about because I, I was a number of our organizations you were a part of as a member of the uh, World ERC, which is the Employee Relocation Council. Correct. And then you're also a member of the Global Mobilities, your Global Mobility Specialist. Correct. So when I'm going through your bio, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing that you understand being connected. Yeah. And being in, in, and being in these relationships and creating an environment, because well, quite frankly, that's why you're on this show right now. Because we we went to the same council. Otherwise, you wouldn't be on this show. So this is extending your brand outside of what you would normally do comfortably. Yes, absolutely, and, and, <laughs> absolutely. And then that's what this is all about. This may lead to something else. It may not, but it's still brand development, or it's brand exposure. And that's what it's all about with your brand. How long have you been in this type of business? I've been in this business for 20 years. Okay. And it takes a long time to build a real estate business, mm-hmm. particularly because in real estate, people see you as competition. And so there's not a lot of people who will kind of reach <laughs> out across the aisles to help you. And you kind of have to, you, you say you don't listen to other people's stories because it's not yours. And, and that's very true. Uh-huh. However, you know, sometimes you don't see a lot of that in real estate because they, they just don't do it. You know, they like, um, you know, like, no, you know, this is. So, so my, okay, I got that. So yeah. you're out there. Yeah. How do you get your hustle on? How, knowing that you have no mentors. Yeah. Well, actually, I do. Okay, cool. Okay. Okay. Cool. okay. Uh, one of my mentors is one who I've absolutely never met, and that's Tyler Perry. I read mm-hmm. a lot. I read all of his things and, you know, mm-hmm. how he was successful. And mm-hmm. it's certainly different because we're mm-hmm. two different things. Mm-hmm. But, you know, what I like most is that he says, you know, whatever you're going to do, just step out and, and, and do it. You right. know, if you're going to start, you know, walking or exercising, if you go out for five minutes, it's <laughs> to start and come back. Right. So, and I've actually done that because, right. you know, Did I was you like do it consistently. Uh, yes. Oh, good. And, and good. now I'm up to 10 miles. See? Oh, wow. Yeah. So I, I started out small. Uh-huh. Uh, my other mentor is Orlando Lynch at Atlanta Peach Movers, and mm-hmm. he's always available to answer questions and mm-hmm. help me out and text me back when mm-hmm. I have a problem, whether it be with staff or mm-hmm. the, the running of the business. And, and it's kind of related to what we do right. because, you know, he's moving people. Right. And, mm-hmm. and, and that's what we're doing. We're moving people as well. And so that's really interesting. So, so basically by... Uh, I guess that's what I'm doing, and I know that's what I'm doing, Money Making Conversation, because that's why I started this show, to just have your story. Your story is, uh, is compelling, your story is relatable, and people need to hear your story. And so as, as, we, as we write down this information that you're giving us, what is your biggest takeaway, a give, a give of information to individuals who, who are listening to you right now? Because you, cause you survived that little, that little dip. Yes, I did. The housing yes. dip that, that that President Obama had to pull us out of. Right in '08. Mm-hmm. So uh, being licensed in three states mm-hmm. was was a, a great thing as well because in Texas mm-hmm. we didn't uh, the, the market didn't take such a a nose down mm-hmm. as it did here. Mm-hmm. Uh, it did in Miami, in Georgia, though, in really Florida. Took a hit. Yeah, mm-hmm. Georgia and and Florida took a hard hit. Why? Uh, because in the the real estate market uh, there, I, I imagine that there's there's more people that move into the Georgia area and, and they were not, they, 
they owned more property Mm -hmm. and they had a lot less um, equity in Mm -hmm. the, in the, in the, in the properties. Mm -hmm. And so when, when they, when they took a nosedive and they had to leave it, it just plummeted. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, that's one of the main reasons. Um, So let me ask you this because, because you, you deal with all types, you know, but you didn't start going to China. You didn't start going to Russia. You you didn't start dealing with athletes. It was just you, and you had to step out. You had to like figure out who you who you are and why you are doing this. Can you tell me some of those steps? Well, because because like I always tell people, when you're not doing something normal, then people will question you. People will go, "That don't make any sense." <laughs> right. And, you know, you know, because you because and sometimes you don't know because you can't you know when you know it's just like I'm in entertainment. I can't right. tell you all the time how I'm getting paid. Exactly. And that confuses people. Uh huh. And also when I tell people what I do, what's my eight hour day? And they go, I, I first of all, I get right. tired of television because <laughs> because it, it leads to more questions. Right. And so because so is is the world you live in a, a, a world a, a lonely world or a world that's engaged or we're communicating with a lot of people all the time? Yeah, uh, it's it's a very lonely world when it comes to being a business owner, mm-hmm. uh, but being engaged with people and uh, making them. Uh, helping them to find what, what they need in, in terms of, of a home. Mm-hmm. Uh, so before I did this, I was a hospital chaplain. Mm-hmm. And, and I, had gra- I have great passion for hospital chaplaincy. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that um, I, I couldn't keep a schedule. That mm-hmm. was the main thing. So mm-hmm. I, I had two sons. I can't keep a schedule. Mm-hmm. What do I do? I don't want to stay at home. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I started looking at real estate and I, and I had a passion for that as well. Mm-hmm. Also my you neighbors say passion for r- real estate. What, what is that? You know, like I can understand, like I was a stand up comedian. I can uh-huh. understand. I would go on stage telling jokes and all that stuff and wanted to be an actor. Couldn't sing. <laughs> I but can't boy, either. Boy, I can tell you, I can, I can look good trying. <laughs> so, so when you said passion for real estate, what is that? A passion for real estate is, is like uh, all I thought about was structures. Uh, the anatomy of a house, what it looks like, <laughs> everything about it. So when when you and I look at a house, we're going to see something totally different. Right. I'm going to see, you know, how it was made and constructed. Uh, what maybe what century that some of the columns, are, if there are some, mm. what they came out of. You mm-hmm. know, all of the different things that make up a house. Mm-hmm. And you know, what is it going to be like if a family moves into this house? And mm-hmm. when 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 walk, people walk into a house with me and they say, "Yeah, you know, I can." I can make this work, then I'm not going to sell them that house. I yeah. want to hear, oh, now yeah. this is it. Because right. Right. I know that you have to live there for, you know, many years. Oh, you don't want that. Or whatever. And you, you don't, don't want that. Because right. you know your number becomes on speed dial. <laughs> exactly. Why you sell me this? Uh, exactly. I always tell people, some money ain't good money. It's right. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, if I know it is close to a landfill or something like that, we, we, we let you know, <laughs> we, you know, and we document. I'm Absolutely. documenting all this. You, you, you knew all of this, you right. know, that we, we let you know what it was going to be. we live in a society where they want a suit. Oh, absolutely. They want a suit. We're talking <laughs> to Sylvia Weddington, uh, Weddington Realty, Correct. Uh, that's yes. located in Georgia, Texas, and Florida. Yes. And we're going to be right back because I want to talk about your balanced life. Those two sons who got there swimming. Okay. Because I, I had a daughter who played tennis. Oh, wow. So I know that's an expensive it <laughs> is. game. And you got two of them. I just <laughs> okay. had one. Oh, okay. So we'll be right back more with Sylvia. And thank you for coming doing doing my show live. I appreciate it. Thank appreciate you. I appreciate you. And uh-huh. we're going to talk about it. We'll get the word out. Some phone numbers and, okay. and uh, websites. we got to promote your brand. That's why you came on. That's what Money Making Conversation is all about. We'll be right back with Sylvia. Thanks. Hi, this is Rashawn McDonald. You're listening to Money Making Conversations. Uh, I think I've developed a long-term friend now. You we, certainly have, uh, yeah. You know, especially when I need to... some ministry, you know what I'm saying? Going, <laughs> Praise the Lord on that house. <laughs> <laughs> Believe it or not, I've actually married people in homes that they've uh, uh, bought, you know, you just, and, 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 and done baby dedications and baptisms. Do you post you know, that on social media? Do you put that? I, I, don't, I don't put it out see, there, but see. it is a per- point of difference. I had one client that called, and she was trying to get married, and right. she couldn't find a justice of the peace. I'm like, well, wait, do you have your license? Right. Yeah, when do you want to get married? I'll be there, and I performed the wedding, and she posted it on social media. Awesome, yeah, you know, but I didn't. Because what what role does social media play in your brand? Oh gosh, it plays uh, every role in my brand. Mm-hmm. You know, people get to see who I am, mm-hmm. uh, what we're doing, um, and and what offers we have, what what real estate looks mm-hmm. like. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
uh, how to purchase a home mm-hmm. and because there's there's a lot of different steps and a lot of moving pieces. So mm-hmm. uh, it's you know it's educational for mm-hmm. people who want to uh, who for particular people who've never bought a home. Yeah, before I, I know I started a little bit in this conversation got off of we was talking about 2008 when the housing crisis hit and uh, I was talking about Georgia and Texas and how Georgia. Georgia and Florida, or Georgia, Florida, and Texas. Now, Georgia and Florida hit a lot worse than Texas. But how did you survive that moment? You know, because I'm sure a lot, I'm sure that's when a lot of doubts had you chosen the right profession. How can you, how can you get around that? But you said what helped you was you in, you were in three different states. Yeah, it helped me to be in three different states. Mm -hmm. And it also helped that I didn't really have to depend on real estate. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and I, I still worked as a chaplain part-time. Mm-hmm. And when you get into real estate, one of the things that you have to do before you really can do it full-time is to be able to work until you can get to that point. And, <laughs> right. and, that's, and that's the hard part because right. it, is, is it, it is a great investment mm-hmm. as well. Uh, mm-hmm. It's not, it's not um, cheap to be a real estate agent. They mm-hmm. have a lot of fees, but, mm-hmm. and, and a broker has even more fees. Right, yes. right, right. So, so with that being said, because uh, you've, 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 we've talked about that balanced life. You know, I always tell people on my show that uh, from 20, 2000 to 20, 2016, I didn't have a balanced life. You know, I was building and working with Steve as a partner, Steve Harvey as a, a business partner, traveling all over this country, doing all these different television shows. You know, my relationship with my, my, my daughter was it's fantastic, but she was a tennis She's a tennis prodigy, as they would say, you know, okay. so phenom, as they say. <laughs> and, uh, and so, and, and I, in fact, if you come to my house, she has a little tennis. I built a tennis house, a tennis court, everything. You wow, know? yeah. And so, and because that's what that was her dream. And I, and I felt that I, I was not going to get in the way of saying, hey, you know. Exactly. Uh, I don't know if you're going to make it, but <laughs> I would tell you, when I, when I started managing, uh, when I stopped managing Steve Harvey in 2016, I got to go on the road with her. And uh, and I got to see women who were 28, 30. Yeah. And I didn't like what I saw because I was like, what's, you know, what's that option? You know, what if you don't make it? Because there's no guarantees. And so how can that, well, what would her life be? Because she had no social life, you know, because she yeah. was always out on the court. Yeah. But she didn't even go to prom, you know. And so she was uh, 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 playing tennis. And so you have a similar situation, not extreme, because you, you, you have sons. So, I mean, they, at least they get to talk to each other. Right. Just like the, the yeah. Williams sisters had the Williams sisters. <laughs> right. So it helped them kind of like walk through the path and uh, bounce things off each other, but swimming. Now, when you say the word swimming, people will rather go, oh, they're just diving in the water, putting on some little, little that should be a cheap sport. <laughs> <Okay>. No, <laughs> they are like, they have a suit called a faskin, and it's only good for about five or ten swims. A suit called a yeah, faskin. faskin, and uh-huh. those are $500. So they only put those on for major races, <laughs> and not to mention the goggles and and okay. the, the training and yes. So okay, so I, it's almost comical. You say, "Hold on, it's five hundred dollars," but major races. Now you you see them just walking out the house with, and the that's little, the cheap one, that five hundred dollar one. And so that makes them yeah. like I guess slide through water. It repels the water mm-hmm. uh, a certain way and helps to constrict the muscles. Okay. And okay. so uh, swimmers who are competitive swimmers, as right. my sons are, that's that's what they have. And what age are they right now? Are they They're right? at 16 and 18. Okay, they cool. They just so, aged up. But they've been doing this since they were two years old. So <laughs> I've been waking up at 4 o'clock in the morning <laughs> since they were two years old. Now, how did that start? How did that start? Actually, I wanted them to learn how to swim. Okay. And we moved into a new subdivision, and they, they had— just opened the swimming pool, mm-hmm. and I, I took them down there to learn how to swim, and they, and they did. And, right. you know, they did all the other sports, and then they decided that they wanted to swim competitively. Wow. So it, swimming is very early, so mm. they run in water. They wake up, you know, they, and they are very dedicated. Mm-hmm. Um, they've been training for this for a long time since mm-hmm. they were two years old. Like mm-hmm. I said, they've been in the water. So we get up. They have to be in, in the pool by 5.15 mm-hmm. every morning mm-hmm. before school. And then after school, they go back at 4.15 in the evening, and they swim until about yeah, 6, that's, that's, 6.15. That's about right. That's about yeah. right. You know, it's, <laughs> so, that's why I'm saying it's, so, it's, so, it's such a blessing that they have each other because right. that's a very isolated life. You know, there's no time to really mingle. Right, and it, it well, the, their coach is, is better at helping them mingle 
uh, mm-hmm. the coach that they have now. But with swimmers, they never get to mingle because they're actually in the water. So they don't really get to right. talk That's to like each other. Right, that's like tennis. Yeah. You know, like so unless you're playing doubles, you know, in tennis, you might talk to somebody. But basically, it's an individual sport. Exactly. And so, so that's what I really, uh, I really uh, feel good about your situation because at least they get to understand, get to bounce off anything that they want to. They they're confused about. They don't have to run to you. They're 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 each other's best friends. Hey, well, not always. Okay, okay. <laughs> they're brothers, but well, you know, you know, saying, you know, you know I, I can't. I'm going to beat you, and I can't wait well, to good. kick you. Blah 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 blah. Right. You know, so they're you know they're they're competitive. They're, right, they're, they're, and especially now they're in the same competitive group. Then, oh, okay. So you know now they want. But to. you know, but that's a good thing because of the fact that it, it pushes them. You know, because it I'm, does. Well, you know, I like that because of the fact that you know it, we know this is not an extreme competitiveness. You know, it's like, hey, you beat me today, I'm gonna beat you tomorrow. <laughs> and then, of course, it's the younger one who's who's, who's driving to beat the older one. That sounds the, like you're at my house. I, 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 I had a daughter. Okay. I have a daughter. She's 22 now. She's uh-huh. uh, she's in, you know, she blew out her knee when she was 19. Uh-huh. And uh, and so I remember she looked at me and she said, uh, uh, "Dad, I said, what do you want to do?" Because I knew that was about her third serious injury. You know, she had broken foot, a shoulder. So I knew at that point, yeah. you know, that all sports have their injuries, don't yeah, they? They do. And then yeah. so I, I was like, um, and so I I, I told her. What you want? She I go to college, and I immediately told her, "Do not worry about the expenses that you incurred in pursuing a tennis career, because that that guilt and that that guilt will pop on them real hard." You I know, don't because, think it's popping on my sons at no, all. No, no, they, 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 they still like to swim, but if they make a decision to change, then then that that's when the guilt will come about, and oh. you have to be really aware of that because of the fact that they know. They know how much money you're spending. You might think they don't know, but they they totaling all that information in their heads, and they are they 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 feel they're blessed that it's happening for them, but they also can can be overwhelmed by it. And so that's what I'm saying. It's really well, important new. that you I have. Didn't know that. Oh, they can be overwhelmed by it, and yeah. so because of the fact that they do know, they know how much that suit costs. <laughs> they and when it goes bad, they know that mommy has to go get another one, and they really. Really don't want to, but they know that's the only way they can compete because everything's down to a tenth of a second that you, you can win or lose a, right. a, a major a major swim meet yeah. and things like that. So, so with that being said, what is the future for you? You know, for your company, for your brand. You know, I start out with this major introduction about you know we got to be multilingual. You know, and then you mentioned Russia, you mentioned China, Rishon. It's not many trips there, but they are trips. You know, I've survived 2008. I'm in Texas. I'm in Georgia. I'm in Florida. You know, you 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 know, if something think, go bad, you can always pray about it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I take a lot of turnaround trips, so mm-hmm. I may leave at four in the morning and be back at four in the evening. That's my girl. That's so, me. so my goal is that if my children see me when they wake up, mm-hmm. and I, I make their breakfast, mm-hmm. and they see me when they get home. Mm-hmm. Because I will have made their dinner, so I put I use a lot of crock pots and mm-hmm. things like that, and so dinner's ready. So when they get home, I'm there, mm-hmm. you know, and I'm serving dinner. Mm-hmm. It's a very rare occasion that I'm not there, mm-hmm. and I'm certainly at every every swim event. Uh, I don't miss any. Cool. Now that's that's the family, that's uh, that's work. Any charity, any foundations that you're tied to? Yes, I have a foundation. It's called Ella's Heart Foundation. Mm-hmm. And Tell us about it. It was uh, a foundation that start, started in, in memory of my mom. Mm-hmm. She, uh, as a young child, had rheumatic fever. Mm-hmm. And at 5 o'clock, I mean at 5 uh, years old, she became a, a the cook for the family because she couldn't go out and work like everybody else. Like, mm-hmm. like they had a feel. So mm-hmm. they, they had to work the feel. Mm-hmm. Uh, but anyway... Uh, as her life progressed, she had heart problems, and she had. So your family is from where? From Lake Charles, Louisiana. Oh yeah, from Lake Charles, Louisiana. Because yeah. when yeah. you said Fields, I went. That sounds very. Louisiana. Well, Opelousas, Louisiana. Well, you know, go back a little. That's where she was. I ten. Everything's on I ten. Everything is on I ten. That's correct. Lafayette, Opelousas, right up north of Lafayette. You gotta go to. Gotta go. Gotta can't get through Houston unless you go through Lake Charles on on I ten. That's exactly you know, go right. Go to Golden Triangle, which goes through Vida, then, uh, <laughs> then Port Arthur, then Beaumont. Wanna, yeah, you know, right. You don't want to get stuck <laughs> in Vida. Right. <laughs> you keep going. <laughs> oh, I so, love it. Oh, okay. You, you bring it back memory. That's right. You, know, you didn't want to have gas problems in Vida. No, no, not Vida there. Vida uh, still has their reputation for a very uh, racist area right. uh, in, the, in the state of Texas, whether it's, whether it's true or not. Yeah. Uh, within the black community, we right. are aware that that's not a neighborhood that you want to hang out in right. and, uh, and seek help. 
Right, because exactly. It, won't, it might not be friendly help that you're going to get. <laughs> and so so we always drove we drove the speed limit when we got through Vida. Right. All the time. But that, okay. that's, that, that life, you know, so your Louis, so your Louisiana background, 